Hyvä on lahvi. Hello everyone. I hope that you're doing well today. Um, you know, we are on Let's Talk. Let's Talk. We are back again. And uh, today we have a special guest, as I was saying to you last time. Um, whenever we meet like this, it's for a reason. And today we are very blessed that we have a special guest. So now, as you can see, we have a, a very beautiful lady here with us. Uh, which she will introduce herself after I've finished, I, I've, I've done the prayer. So let's pray. Every Father Lord, we are blessed to be in your presence today. We thank you, Lord, for granting us another day and for being with us, Lord, throughout our activities. We are praying that, Lord, as we are about to discuss, Lord, an important topic once again, at the sound of the voice of our Lady, O oh God, I pray, O oh Lord, that understanding will be received by our audience in the name of Jesus, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, anyone that will come in contact, anyone that will uh, watch this video, even now and after, Lord, will be blessed and have another perspective about this topic that we are about to um, unfold. We thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So um, at this very time, I don't know if you would like to introduce yourself. Who, who are we speaking to today? Um, hello, everybody. My name is Marie Ajari Wisebourn. Um, do you want me to give like a, a little like brief overview? Of just... Yeah, if you could. If you could. Yeah. If you don't mind, yeah. Um, you know, these questions are so hard because you have to rack your brain for all the stuff about you. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's one of the hardest questions to talk <laughs> about yourself. <Yeah. laughs> um, I am currently about to go to law school, so I'm studying. Um, I enjoy sports. I enjoy fun. Um, I don't have a favorite color, so that's, mm. that's one thing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it, yeah. So, 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 Marie, so what's the topic today? What are we talking about? Today we're talking about perceptions of beauty. Now today, oh, people may come and fight us, but it's okay. We will just... <laughs> you know, we, we are here to talk. Yeah. So, you know, we, we are not shy to say what is right to say. So um, so because we are talking about this, this, so what's the different, you know, what's the definition of beauty from the societal point of view? I think when you look at society, depending on where you live, it changes. So being beautiful, for example, in Ghana, you may not be seen as beautiful in a different nation because the people have kind of constructed amongst themselves what beauty is to them. And so you know, wherever you go in the world, it will change. But I think looking at the West, since we're in the West, though there are like small, small differences in what society sees as a beautiful woman, there is still that kind of general, I guess, idea of what is a beautiful woman, somebody who has long hair, somebody who is of a flat, fair complexion, somebody who I guess is very quiet and kind of has everything going on for them. So even though there are differences, I think in the West, they are kind of promoting that image of a slim woman who is of a fair complexion, um, predominantly white since we are in the West anyway. Um, and I guess that's kind of what I've seen with society. But I feel like society doesn't actually know what their standard is for beauty. Mm. Because if you look at the movies like 2000s, um, it was about being slim, very, very slim. And back in the day, somebody would say, oh, your butt's so big. It was an insult. Like in the movies, they'll be offended. Like, my butt's so big. Everybody will be angry. But nowadays, if you say that, everybody's cheering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, my butt's big. It's, it shows you that society is not stable. And so mm -hmm. I think that's why it's so important that, you know, we have this discussion because, you know, for the generation coming up and our current generation, that we don't place our understanding of what is beautiful in what society is currently viewing as beautiful. Because right now it is, you know, people with big curves and things like that. We don't know what's to come in the months or the years ahead. And so if you say, you know what, let me watch the influencers and watch society and see what they are saying, you will always be swayed, you'd never be stable. And so I think society doesn't actually know because it's always changing depending on, I guess, whatever they want to promote at that time yeah wow wow that's great that's that's a very uh, beautiful answer and I, I i love it i love it the way you you were able to exp 
explained yourself very well about the fact that obviously society um, point of view of beauty is, is ever changing, so it's never stable. So from the other point of view, so what's how the Christian, you know, definition of beauty, which is probably much deeper than the one of society. <laughs> I think the Christian um, point of view of beauty is also, it varies depending who you're asking. Mm. Um, because wow. depending on what denomination you're from, they also have certain standards. In some churches, the women have to wear dresses to their ankles and they're seen as beautiful. Some other places, your hair must always be wrapped, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So if you're talking about Christians per se, because there are differences amongst the way that I guess we kind of, do church and things like that it kind of forms people's understanding of beauty but I think regardless of those differences there should always be a fundamental baseline and that baseline should always be the word of God um, the word of God should always be our reference point when it comes to understanding who we are because it is God that made us and so if we don't go back to the word of God to understand how am I seen as beautiful then we'll always be lost because you always go back to the maker of a car to know how the car works. And so if I want to understand whether I'm beautiful, I've got to go back to God. And so I think for me, looking at the Christian view, as a basic, we should have that understanding in the Bible. Um, and so I think a few scriptures that I was reflecting on um, when it comes to how I understand the Christian view of beauty to be, I think all the scriptures point to the fact that it's twofold. It is inward beauty expressed outwardly. But it first starts inwardly, um, because if you just focus on the outside, it's hard for it to impact on you on the inside. But if it's the inward thing, it expresses out and it's so much easier to kind of flow. But on the outside, you can just fake it, but then you won't get far. And so I think um, a few key scriptures that I was kind of looking at um, in my notes was um, firstly, Proverbs 3130. So everybody knows that the virtuous woman, everybody hailing her virtuous woman, <laughs> um, after explaining all that she does, it says that charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And so as I was reflecting on that scripture, what it kind of highlighted to me is that when it comes to praising a woman in terms of her beauty and how she is, we look at either whether she's charming or whether she's actually beautiful. But the Bible is telling us that charm is deceptive. You can act charming, but your actions and your nature can actually be a very mean person. So it's not something that we should put our energy in. Secondly, beauty is fleeting because as you age, things change. And the way that people praise you for being beautiful when you were 25 won't be the same when you were 70. And so these two are variables that change. But it's telling us that what is one thing that is very key is a woman who fears the Lord. And so I think that's the first thing when it comes to the Christian viewpoint of being beautiful, the inward part. It's about us being women of God that fear God, not because God is scary, but out of reverence to him, that the way we act, carry ourselves, speak to others, it should show that we have that fear of God in us. And equally, when you look at the New Testament, it kind of echoes that similar thing in First Peter chapter 3, 3 to 6. It talks about how um, your beauty should not be merely consistent of outward adornments, but a gentle spirit, which is precious in God's sight. And I remember coming across that years ago and I was like, rah, it's kind of kind of deep, you know, um, because sometimes you can either have one or the other. Either you focus so much on the outside and neglect the inside or you focus too much on the inside and not even care about how you carry yourself. I'll get onto that later. But um, as for first piece of three, it's telling us that it shouldn't merely just be about that. A gentle and quiet spirit, not to say that you should be quiet, but gentleness, that's a fruit of the spirit. Somebody that exhibits the fruit of the spirit. Are you a woman of God that when people see your life and how you talk with people, does it show that the power and the fruit of the spirit is being evident in what you do? And so these two scriptures, when you marry them together, Proverbs and First Peter, it shows us that firstly, inward is important. Inward development of your character you should be a beautiful person inwardly but then looking at first peter it said not merely which means that it's not just about the inside you should also care about how you carry yourself and i'm laughing because i used to be the chief executive officer of i don't care about how i carry myself ministries i will just carry myself anywhere anyhow i'll just be wearing flip-flop outside oh god has done a great thing in my life because what <laughs> um, <laughs> but talking about the outside I think you know the outside is is key when we do the women's slogan we say Abigail a beautiful woman full of wisdom but when you look at that 
in first Samuel chapter 25 verse 3 I believe when David is going to meet Nabal and it talks about um, Nabal and it talks about Abigail being the wife of Nabal it says that she's wise and she's beautiful so you see that twofold inwardly wisdom she has discernment she's somebody that is a woman who can see things and be able to act accordingly but then she's also beautiful the bible could have just said she's wise and left it at that but it's mentioning those two because when it comes to beauty it's inwardly expressed outwardly um, and then when we look at fearfully and wonderfully made we quote it all the time in our bio I'm fearfully and wonderfully made um, in psalms but when you look at that scripture i really like it because the words that david uses he says that you knitted my innermost being and knitting something takes time is delicate it shows that you put intentionality into every single kind of threads that you did and then when we look at fearfully and wonderfully made we just stop at that scripture i'm fearfully and wonderfully made but when you finish the rest of the verse it says and my soul knows it and i think as women of god knowing that you're fearfully and wonderfully made is so so key um we don't just quote scripture for the sake of quoting it we quote it so that we can be led by it and allow it to be you know fruitful in our lives and so it's important that when we look at beauty outwardly know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made like actually accept it don't learn it accept it because I can learn that fire is hot and that fire burns me but it's not to like accept it that I will act accordingly and not go near the fire and so if you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made that's great but accept it because society will come and tell you you're ugly will tell you that you're clapped xyz xyz but if you have that anchor that doesn't change society will always change its standards but the word of god remains the same and so if today i'm fearfully and wonderfully made tomorrow i'm fearfully and wonderfully made in 10 years because the bible doesn't change and so i think that as christians we need to see that this perspective in the word of God is so, so key for us to understand that we are actually beautiful women because God said so. And God is the biggest authority out there. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Wow. Wonderful. It's, uh, it's beautiful the way you end up as well, you know, saying that they, uh, it's important for us to have that anchor, you know, which never changes. And uh, it's, it's always constant. So if you're be uh, beautiful and wonderfully made yesterday, you are still today and you will be forever. That's great. Um, just for the people that are following us, if you want to, you know, fire any question, if you want to make any <laughs> comment, free. we are here. Uh, our Deaconess Marie as well is here to answer all your questions because I will not be answering questions. I will, <laughs> I will be asking the questions. So if you have any, if you want to comment, uh, feel free. We are here for this. So let's let's do it together. Um, so Marie, you, you made mention of, um, you know, uh, different aspect of beauty obviously you mentioned the one um, from the society that is ever changing and you mentioned the one from from the christian perspective that is uh, the anchor that we come from the word of god which is always cost and is always the same so when it comes to you your own definition of beauty then what what would you say about beauty then because obviously you you mentioned both parties but now we want to know what's the definition of beauty <laughs> for our uh, beautiful marie um I would say that for me anyway it's been a journey um to understanding what beautiful means to me I'll take you guys on a journey in like two seconds Thank don't you. worry yes, this is what we like we, we like real <laughs> stories we are here I have stories this. my friends tell yes. me that I, I have stories of life so I'm coming wait for me um but before that um I think for me it now it, it, it stems from the word of God. Now it stems from that understanding that the word of God is my foundation first and foremost. And so if God has said in his word that when he created everything, he saw it and it was good, that was the final thing, it was good, then who am I to tell myself that I'm bad when God has called everything that he made good? And so taking you guys on the journey, um, when I was a lot younger in year eight or so, and I know we have some of our young viewers watching, that's the reason why I'm telling this story. When I was in year eight or so, we were stationed in our first district in Harlow and it's a predominantly white area. I mentioned that for a reason. So a lot of the boys will be telling the girls, oh, you look nice, you look nice. And I'm just sitting there like, so um, like, what about me? Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> a lot of a lot of the, the boys will be telling the girls, oh, you're nice, you're this, you're that. And I remember one time in PE, the girls would look at me and be like, oh, Marie, why does your body do that? And I felt so low. I felt so like ugly, like, ah, 
Like this is not it. And sometimes when you allow your definition of beauty to be determined by the people you see around you, you will always try to measure up to them. So I was trying to measure up to the girls I saw in my school, like, hey, they have long straight hair, they have this, they have that. So let me also do that so that I can also hear that I'm beautiful. Because if the boys see them and say they're beautiful, then I should also follow that kind of, you know, I guess, example and do what they're doing. So then we get transferred to Croydon. Now Croydon is the complete different. Croydon is a predominantly black area. And so going from a place where I felt like, rah, like this is peak, I'm, I'm not even nice, like it's, it's, it's as well. And then coming to Croydon, I was the new girl. And I remember, first of all, nobody minded me. Nobody looked me twice, I said it as well. And one day I was doing athletics training and then I came to school the next day. And this boy, he trained in the same athletics club as me and we were sitting in form. And then he goes, you know, Marie, yeah, she has a body. Everyone was doing, ah, and I was like, eh, eh, waiting is what do you, I don't know again. So when they said that, it was as though I had now become visible. Prior to that, nobody looked me, nobody mind me. And so for some of the girls watching, it may be that people only call you beautiful because of how your body looks. And I think that is so, so um, dangerous because your body is not completely who you are. Your body does not define who you are. And it's to the point that I sometimes see people post pictures online and they'll just blur out their face and it's just their body. And I'm like, you are more than your body, you know. Do you not know how precious and valuable you are to God that he gave you his only son, that you're just seeing your beauty only in your body? And so that was me. That's how I saw my beauty. It was in my body. Because prior to that, nobody complimented me. Nobody said anything to me. But now it's like when you're getting that kind of compliments from people, you attach it to whatever it is that they compliment you about. And so now you think, okay, if it's my body, then it's my body that is beautiful. It's not me as an individual. And so I found myself, you know, whenever I'd go on Boohoo, I saw me on Boohoo. We have, we have issues. But I saw Boohoo. They will see me. Well, they won't see me because anyway. So um, as for me on Boohoo, I, I would go there and whenever I'm shopping for a dress, all I'd write is bodycon midi. And bodycon is like them tight dresses that look as if they're made from a napkin or something. So um, I'd, <laughs> I'd go on Boohoo and that's all I would type in. And I found that because I allowed other people to form my understanding of beauty, it was imp it impacting how I carried myself. I would draw more to tighter clothes. I would draw more to clothes that I guess would show the figure in X, Y, Z. And I think as time went on, I didn't have peace of heart and mind mm. because you're doing something for somebody to tell you something. But when they don't tell you that, you feel like, rah, I put in all this effort. They'd even notice me. They'd even look at me. And I really want women of God to not be in that place. Like, especially the young girls, don't be allowing yourself to be subjected to a particular standard because you want somebody to tell you you're beautiful and because they kind of hold that in their hand whatever they tell you to do you will do it so that you can hear that you're beautiful and obviously similar to the society standards you will always be swayed and so I think there was a time where my friend and I decided that oh we're going to do a modesty fashion line um, but it never happened in, in in hindsight but I believe that God was using that as a tool to really transform my heart and, you know, talking about modesty, you can't talk about beauty without talking about modesty. And I know people are already tensing up like, oh, my gosh, you mentioned modesty. But, you know, modesty to me is also part of being beautiful outwardly. Um, and as I mentioned already, it starts on the inside. And so as you were doing that clothing line, I allowed myself to be opened up to learn about modesty, open up to learn about beauty in the word. And so as I did my research, I watched videos. I remember Vincent and Nancy, they did a series called Nancy Meets. And there was a girl on there called Nash Amber. She was the founder of Set Apart Style, which is like a modest clothing line, not a clothing line, but like a modest um, kind of platform. And she did a lot of videos about how modesty starts in the heart. And how it's a thing where you're trying to honor God with your body, honor God with how you carry yourself. And so as I watched more and more videos, I found that my understanding about beauty was changing. And I think it first starts with that willingness to actually understand. And that comes from somebody who back in the day, all I knew was tight clothes and body con. That's it. But, you know, when you allow God to transform your understanding and your thinking, you will see that, rah. I'm actually more than these things that people tell me and that God has already called me fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, I don't need to wait for somebody to tell me that. God has already said it in his word. And like I said, his word stays the same. 
And so for me, that helped me to define beauty. It was a journey, but it allowed God to work on my heart so that I see that in my actions, in my deeds, how I carry myself, I want to fear God. I want to honor God. Um, but in saying that, as I mentioned earlier, is either we have the inward or the outward one of the extremes and after a while I was just the person that inwardly I focus on fearing God and loving God but like I said I was the chief executive of I will carry myself anywhere anyhow ministries there was a time bro I dropped my friend at the bus stop I wore one headscarf that was wrapped anyway anyhow one anyhow t-shirt I wore one sketch that was just had holes in it oh god is my teeth ha no it, it's <laughs> actually well because it was and then to top it all up I wore flip-flops no because was madness doing me I, I need to get um it was that bad and my mom would always tell me carry yourself well carry yourself well carry yourself well and I'm like ah I love God God loves me what is it again but I think sometimes women of God I don't know if we think that we'll get to heaven faster if we don't carry ourselves well <laughs> or, <laughs> or we think that you know by carrying ourselves well God will not mind us again as I was reflecting on today's conversation, what dropped in my heart was, you know, when they were building the temple of God in the Old Testament, you can say that, okay, you know what, the temple of God, it would hold the Ark of the Covenant, so the presence of God with the Israelites, with his people. And so they're building a place that will hold the presence of God, the Ark of Covenant, um, the, sim the symbolism of it. They could have said, oh, because it's God, would, let's just use sticks, let's just use wood, let's just use mud, like, is, the, is, is, is God, so it's not that deep. But when you look at the instructions God gave them for the thing that would carry his presence, it was so specific. He didn't say, let's use mud and wood. He said gold. He said linen. He said purples. He said embroidery this, this and that. And, and bronze and all these kind of valuable things that would adorn the temple, that would show that this temple is beautiful. This temple holds that glory that is on the inside. And so when we look at ourselves, the Bible tells us that we are the temple of God. Yes, you can love God and fear God, but women of God, I beg you, don't carry yourself like how I used to. Don't carry yourself like yam. And I say yam because, you know, it sounds like I'm messing around, but I, I use it as an analogy. Unless you know that yam is nice, is nutritious, is a good food. If you just look at yam in the shop, you'll walk past it. Because the way that it's all like bent and it's like brown, it doesn't look like it actually holds that potential to be, you know, something nice. And so equally, yes, it's good to work on your inside, but carry yourself well. Carry yourself as somebody who is beautiful and somebody who carries the presence of God. Our God, he, he's not a God that he just, you know, does his things anyway, anyhow. Like I said, the way they made the temple of God, it was so specific. It was valuable things. I'm not saying go and buy Gucci and Louis Vuitton. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying with the little that you have, put yourself together well. It's not everyday headscarf. I used to be headscarf um, chief officer. It's not everyday headscarf. Sometimes do your hair nicely. Sometimes, you know, just buy new earrings, just something different that will just allow you to carry yourself well as a woman of God. because. When people see that beauty outwardly, it would draw them close to you. And then people will see that, rah, they're beautiful on the inside. But you don't want to be somebody who, yes, you're beautiful on the outside. But when they come to you, it's like sour, it's bitter. You know, you're rude, you're mean. You, you talk bad about people. You know, it doesn't matter. OK, yes, you're beautiful on the outside. But like I said, it first starts with us fearing God. So my definition is also similar to the word of God. But it's been like a journey since, since second school, really. That's amazing. Um, I think you, you were mentioned uh, about, you know, uh, you know, do your hair, you know, <laughs> wear your hair and all that stuff. What about makeup? What, what's, your, what's your thinking about makeup? Do you have oh. any, any, any thinking? Or <clears throat> well, <clears throat> well <clears throat> I think this, this topic is one that has been spoken about many times some people they're like two extremes there are people that say you know makeup is demonic and is the devil and xyz and xyz um but then there are some people that say if you're gonna wear makeup wear makeup i think for me anyway um i don't think makeup is demonic for me anyway but in saying that there are some makeup brands and palettes that i stay away from 
one because I believe that names carry power like when you look at the bible when they name somebody something is important I brought an eyeshadow palette there was one color called Jezebel I said oh the who I said listen I will not use I will not use it again um and and you know there, there were other palettes called things like lust and seduction I said "Mm -mm, we not do this today um so, you know, in saying that, you know, be, being mindful of that, because I believe names carry power. Why would you name something Jezebel unless you know something is up? Um, but equally, you know, there are women of God who wear makeup and are moving in the power of God and and, and their ministries impacting people. Um, so I don't think makeup is bad. I think it's bad when you make it an idol. I think that's when it's a bad thing, when you make it something that is like your all in all, um, something that is even more um valuable to you than god like you are addicted to it um then that's when i guess the issue comes i guess it's more about how you interact with makeup than actually how the makeup itself because one person they could wear makeup nothing but for you you know that when you wear it it makes you very vain it makes you very proud it makes you very this and that so you know allowing the holy spirit to speak and convict you because different women have different opinions depending on what what they feel led to do so I don't have like an opinion that I want to force on everybody because, um, yeah, I don't feel let's do so. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, thank you. Thank you for, you know, uh, speaking about it, you know, even though I, I know that you didn't want to, I could tell, but, you know, you did it very diplomatically. Well done. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously we're talking about uh, beauty and all that stuff, you know, how the society has defined beauty and Christianity uh, way of beauty. Um, but obviously before uh, social media, um, I believe that uh, the definition of beauty was different and all that stuff. So I, I just want to know how um, has social media influenced the definition of beauty? What do you think about that? Because obviously now you go on Instagram and you scroll, you always see all these ladies and uh, they, they all look alike, honestly. Uh, but thank <laughs> God I'm, I'm married already, so I don't have screaming. to struggle too much. Uh, I'm so. screaming. <laughs> So is is it, is it quite hard now? It's quite difficult. I I think social media, um, I guess, just elaborates what was already there. I don't think mm -hmm. social media has brought something. I think it's more like it was already there, but now it just has a platform to do whatever it is that it was doing. Um, I think, like you said, with social media, one thing I've noticed is that there's a particular aesthetic when it comes to what is deemed as a beautiful woman the majority of of influencers that we kind of see they all have a similar type of look yeah. um you know some of them getting lip fillers some of them getting bum lifts it as well some of them getting bum lifts and all those things I say it as well because it, it makes me sad when I see a lot of young girls wanting to save money to get that particular surgery to aspire to be somebody that has a big bum and all those type of things because they've seen the influencers do it and I think that's probably the most dangerous thing about social media is that it raises up individuals most of the time people who are not Christians people who do not have that understanding and that foundation the word of God it raises those people up to a standard where it's like this is what beautiful looks like everybody else follow and so I see that young girls will begin to pose in those similar ways, the way that they would stand in the corner, the way that they would hold themselves. I'm just like, I see where you got that pose from, but little girl, mm -hmm. you better stop it. Um, it's, <laughs> it. It's important that, you know, yes, social media is good, it's beneficial, but it shouldn't be the source of our understanding and of our acceptance as beauty. I think social media, sometimes if you're not careful, and if you don't first have that anchor, that's why I was saying at the start, the anchor is so important. You will go on there and then just compare yourself to everybody and feel like, rah, I'm not even nice because the beauty that I'm seeing in terms of the likes people get, the comments people get, I don't get those same things. So clearly I'm not fine. Clearly I'm not beautiful. But like I said, the word of God is key. Always going back to the word of God, always going back to the word of God and letting that be your standard, letting that be your anchor so that you know that, yes, these people look X, Y and Z, but I'm also beautiful. I don't need to allow social media to intimidate me because sometimes it can when you see how people get thousands and thousands of likes and reposts and shares and maybe you don't get the same. You feel like, rah, I'm not nice. But I think one thing I do want to say is that social media has covered up sex appeal and branded it as beauty that's what I, I i've noticed that this kind so, of so when you say sex appeal what do you mean sorry 
Um, sex appeal, I would say things that pertain to sex, the, like the sexual nature. Oh, okay. So, you know, okay. um, kind of pushing, you know, women being on there and maybe they're half naked. Or okay, maybe, yeah, 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 that, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, that they're wearing, you know, dresses that have cuts in places that don't need to have cuts in those places. Um, and it's kind of pushing that agenda that, okay, if you want to be seen as nice, because like I said, these influencers are wearing these things, these influencers are carrying themselves in this way, do the same, you know, carry yourself in that way. And it is not beauty because to me beauty is holistic it it, mm. it it involves how you act how you behave how you talk and also how you carry yourself like I said but with that you see that people even in school when they talk about those influences the words they use are oh this girl is nice I would smash that smash in terms of they have sex with her and so yeah I know I say instead of you to be reading your books you're doing smash or pass it as well <laughs> um well, I've, I've watched that program before honestly i said i said hello excuse me your books are calling your name um but yeah with <laughs> with, with smash with smash and pass and whatever you see that the way they describe those girls is more towards their sexual nature but like i said social media has covered all of that and it's presenting it again to us as oh this is beauty but it is not um and i think we need to be careful as christians not to fall into that trap that okay i want to be beautiful the way that social media says it and so we're just changing ourselves depending on what we see online because at the end of the day our we have a responsibility to represent our god well to the world people will not step into a church sometimes to encounter or see god but they will see us who always shout and scream about god and wonder if it's worth knowing that god because of how we act how we carry ourselves how we look and so i think women and men of god we have a responsibility not to just follow what social media is doing um, when it comes to certain things, especially the ideal of beauty and and the, uh, everything surrounding it. So, so obviously this link uh, beautiful to the other question. So are social media redefined Christian beauty then? I, I wouldn't say it has redefined Christian beauty because you cannot redefine what God has written. You cannot redefine what God has said. But I would say that it is redefining our understanding of what is seen as beautiful um, and us as the Christians, because hmm, people will beat me for this weight as well. Sometimes I, I, I go on social media and it makes me sad because people that I, I don't follow, you know, they'd have in their bio God first. But then as you scroll, you just think to yourself, <laughs> how? You know, not to judge them in any type of way. But like I said, I used to be that person. Bodycon was my life and my, you know, my anthem. But um, I, I, I think that we need to not allow social media to do that because it's easy to. When you try to find, you know, a dress, talking about the outward beauty, when you find a dress, trying to find a dress online, it is work. I have to set aside three days just to find one dress. What is that? It's because nowadays every dress either has a mad cut the, the neckline is low. The material is like, you know, tissue is just it's just not it. And so you'd be searching, 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 trying to find something which is reasonable. And sometimes because it's so long, you just kind of cave in like, oh, it's not that deep. Let me just wear whatever. And the more you cave in bit by bit, it's not that deep, it's not that deep, it's not that deep. You'll find that you have strayed so far from the starting point of honoring God with your body, honoring God with how you carry yourself. And by that time, it no longer bothers you because you're like, ah, I look nice. And I'm not saying it's bad to look nice. Yes, carry yourself well. But in doing so, the Bible says, whatever you do, eat or drink, do it to the glory of God. Ask yourself, is what I'm doing glorifying God? is what I'm doing honoring the God that I serve. And it's a hard conversation to have, but I believe that as Christians, we have a responsibility. We have a mandate, like I said, to represent our God well. I was saying to my friend a few years back when we were doing the clothing brand, when we were looking at social media, I was sending him pictures of some dress that was literally like, they might as well just have put the material in the bin because there was no material again. Like I said, yeah, he's doing it. Listen, sis, go and put it in the bin because it's not doing anything. Um, I said to him that if there were two people standing together like this and they both were wearing a dress from Boohoo, <laughs> Boohoo. Uh, this website, they were both wearing a dress from Boohoo, yeah. And it had like slits and cuts and all type of stuffs in it. And it was very tight. And, you know, they were just standing together. And I said to you, tell me of these two, who is a woman of God? Would you be able to tell me, just based on looking at what they are doing, how they are talking, what they are wearing, could you tell me which of these two is a woman of God? They're wearing the same thing. 
you wouldn't because it's like their boyfriend the same thing um and and as I was reflecting and thinking about this I think that yes social media can influence us but we have to push back against it we have to say no we have to say that I'm going to stand on what I know I'm going to stand on the word of God and if we know that we have that responsibility to represent our God well to the world then I cannot be in a place where people see me and somebody else and they don't even know if I'm a woman of God and I know we always say yeah but God looks at my heart God looks at my heart it's true God does look at the heart but what dropped into my my heart this afternoon was that the scripture people use, God looks at my heart, it's taken from 1 Samuel, where Samuel was sent by God to anoint the next king of Israel after Saul has disobeyed God. And so Saul was tall, Saul was good looking. And so when Samuel went to David's father, Jesse, and he was looking at David's brothers, he saw somebody who in essence looks like the previous king. He was tall, he was nice. So Samuel the prophet said, oh, this has definitely got to be the new king because he's tall and whatever. And then God said to him that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. So it was like, don't just look at his outside. But one thing that we miss from that scripture is a key principle, which is that man still looks at the outside it is God that looks at the heart it is not God that we are evangelizing to it is not God that we are trying to bring into the kingdom of God it is not God that we are trying to save it is man and unfortunately for us man looks at the outside it is not it is not they are not God they do not see the inside so because they are not God and they do not see the inside we have that responsibility to make sure that what they see honors the God that we are trying to bring them to and so, yes, you God sees your heart. But like I said, it's not God that you're evangelizing to. It is man. And so therefore, those two people standing together, you should be able to differentiate which one is the woman of God. And sometimes we don't want to hear this. And it's like, oh, you're restricting me. You're doing this. You're doing that. But at the end of the day, as Jesus tells us in Luke, that if you are to be my follower, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus tells us that nobody begins a building without counting the cost of how it will be before they start and they run out of materials. Have you actually counted the cost that being a follower of Christ means that I have to lay aside the things I used to do? The Bible says it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And so with that being said, yes, you can do whatever you want. Yes, you can do anything that you want to do. By the end of the day, you still have that mandate. You still have that responsibility as a child of God to imitate your father as his dear children, as Ephesians 5, 1 tells us. And so with that being said, I just plead with all the women of God. I beg you in the name of our Lord. <laughs> yes, social media can try to influence us, but we should rather be the ones influencing the people around us. People should be able to look at us and wonder why we're so different, wonder why we don't do what they do. And as those conversations happen, that's how we introduce them to our Jesus. But if we do what they do, speak how they speak, why would they ever think that we have encountered the one that can transform us? If we ourselves don't show that we are transformed in our understanding of how we carry ourselves as women of God. Um, and so that's 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 why I felt led to share, because I, I just think that if we are not careful, it will get to a point where because yes we are we, we we are in the grace period and there's grace abounding we just do anything anyhow and we don't care again but there is still that responsibility to represent our god well and there is beauty in 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 doing that there's beauty in honoring god with how we speak nowadays on social media there's this idea they have to be a bad b swear word i just yeah swear word inside um and you know i see a lot of young girls doing that the way that they speak to people so rude so harsh swearing all these things because you know they're influencers and the people they admire because social media has said these are the people to admire they act like that they are bad bees they do anything with men they don't care they just do whatever but like I said, when we go back to that first understanding, we need to not allow that to influence us because it's contrary to the word of God. We are to be people that fear our God. A woman that fears God is to be praised. We are to be people that honor God in the way that we live and the way that we act. So don't copy that whole bad B lifestyle because you want to be seen as beautiful or seen as worthy or seen as X, Y, Z. The best thing to copy is the word of God. That is, that is our role model. That is our standard because we know that that is the one thing that will never fade away. The grass withers, but the word of God will never fade away. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Um, honestly, Marie, 
Uh, you know, um, when we were speaking, you, you you mentioned a lot of things, and um, and I've been blessed by by, by your speech. Um, oh, you blessed. And the question that um, I have for you is, um, you know, sometimes um, as believers, so we we go into um, let's say not not having self love um, at the beginning, because a lot of um, let's say teenagers are going to you know. The, the body changes and all that stuff, especially women, you know, at some point at some age. So what, what would be your advice for those people, you know, that are going through those changes in, in their body, which where they cannot accept those things because they think that they are not, they are not looking as, um, as those role models where they follow you. Obviously they follow social media. So what would you say to them? You know, how, how can they accept themselves, love themselves and uh, understand that the beauty that they have is unique and it's given by Christ. Um, I think the first, the first thing is going back to the place where it says these things, and that is the Bible. Um, the Bible is more than just something that we pick up on Sunday just to read the scripture for the person preaching. You know, it's something that is a light onto our path. And so to get that understanding, first and foremost, you have to open your Bible there was a time where I also felt like that, like, rah, like, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm this, I don't know if I'm that. And I said to myself that if the word of God is true and mm. we truly believe that it's true, there has to be something in here for me that I can hold on to. And so I remember I was going through, you know, Isaiah and I was talking about, you know, Jacob, I have chosen you as my own and something like that. And it was like the words jumped out at me because sometimes when you go through those phases, you want somebody to kind of pick you, somebody to choose you like, oh yeah, you're nice. And you're waiting for that. And if you don't get that, you'll feel down the whole time. But God was just saying that he has made you and he's chosen you. I said, rah. And the Bible tells us that we are chosen generation. And so um, firstly, going back to the word of God, um, some of the scriptures that I mentioned, like Psalms and those things, if you have to put it on your phone as your screensaver to remind you or on your walls, then do it. Whatever you need to do to remind yourself of these truths, do it. And then secondly is accepting the truth. Yes, you've written it. That's great. But accept it. And, you know, allowing God to work on your heart through prayer. I know it's like, oh, it's an everyday pray, but it's everyday pray. No, it is everyday pray because it's a must. <laughs> um, allowing God to, to work on your heart through prayer because it's a conversation with your father. Just opening up that, God, you know what? I don't really feel like I'm beautiful. I don't really feel like I'm nice. I don't really feel like X, Y, Z. And just being honest with God and saying that, God, sh allow me to see what you see in me. Allow me to see that fearfully and wonderfully made that you see. And that's what I had to do. I had to pray and ask God to give me a renewed mind, allow the Holy Spirit to renew my understanding so I wasn't conformed to the patterns of the world. And then I think thirdly, you know, educate yourselves. There's a book, oh, there's a book that I got. Um, it's called Radiant by Priscilla Shira. I got it two years ago um, because even though, yes, you grow, sometimes you sometimes may feel like, oh, you know what? You may question whether you're actually, you know, beautiful or you may doubt whether you have love for yourself and accepting who you are so about two years ago I got this book called Radiant by Priscilla Shira and she's a woman of God that I admire so much she was in War Room if you guys have seen War Room if yeah. you haven't yeah. go ahead and watch it um, <laughs> and so in in the book she says so many things that kind of remind you about what God says about you what God has you know called you to be and there's a particular quote that I really like which is which is that he made you this way, not only so you could be special, but because he'd already thought ahead about how best he could accomplish his ultimate goal through you to reflect the light, his light. The light is what fires the masterpiece of your unique being in um, to life. His radiant light is what fires you to be life. And so, you know, her, her just saying these things in this book, there's so many more quotes. I, I annotated this book like something. I bended the pages, everything, because I wanted to, finish the book and to accept that this is what God says about me. So, you know, educating yourself with Christian materials will definitely help you. Um, and also telling yourself, tell yourself that you're nice. Like don't wait for somebody to tell you, tell yourself, I am fine. I am a fine babe. Period. <laughs> like tell yourself that I'm nice. Tell yourself that I'm beautiful. Tell you, tell yourself these things. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Tell yourself that God has loved me. God has chosen me. And as you tell yourself that it will help you to combat whatever you hear on the outside. But if you yourself don't tell you, 
your parents may not say it, your friends may not say it, and you don't read your Bible, what else do you think you're going to be able to use to stand in such circumstances? So it is a journey with self-love, but invite God into that journey because he's the one that will help us the most through it. So, yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Um, if, you want to, if you would like to, you know, give um, any final speech uh, before we conclude today, because uh, honestly, I'm speechless because you have... Uh, is also this uh, topic you have broke this topic down to the very very fine fine level and uh, and i believe that everyone that will come into contact with this uh, you know youtube live uh, will be blessed uh, Amen. Uh, i'm i'm actually uh, as i say speechless that's that's wonderful so uh, if you have any any final uh, remark or anything that you want to leave with the people today? Um, you know, this platform is still yours. Okay. Um, I think that what I'd want to leave with everybody is that be intentional about understanding that you are beautiful. It doesn't happen by osmosis in that it goes from one concentration to another. It just happens because it doesn't. If you don't take those intentional steps to actually accept what the word of God says, then you will never actually see that change in your life. If you don't take the intentional steps to allow God to open your heart and your understanding towards modesty, you will never actually understand that there is beauty in modesty, so much beauty in modesty. And that modesty is not just wearing a skirt to your ankle. Like it can be fashionable. Um, when, when you when you dress in such way and so if you don't actually take those steps and allow God to actually you know speak to you on those things you will never see that change and so I encourage you to actually take that step because you know like I said our world will tell you so many things your blick your this your that they will come with you constantly people will say so many things to you that kind of external stimuli that oh you're this and you're that but if you have not taken the intentional steps you know, internally to, you know, understand what God says about you, to pray about it, to educate yourself, to have these conversations with your friends and to both sharpen each other. You know, I was telling my friend Dorcas a few weeks ago that, you know, we shouldn't just wait for a man to tell us that we're nice. Like we should be able to say it amongst, you know, women of God. If you see somebody in church who looks nice, tell her, you know, compliments should not be like you're trying to draw blood out of a stone. You know, we, we should be able to, you know, acknowledge that, you know, OK, somebody is beautiful. Somebody is doing something great. Somebody is kind. Somebody is caring. It shouldn't be like, OK, we're just quick to tell people, oh, you're rude, you're this, you're that. But we're not so free with, you know, telling people that, you know, they are exhibiting, you know, the the beauty of Jesus in their lives. So that's one thing that I want to leave with us that, you know, let us be women that build each other up. Let's not compare each other. Let us build up each other and understand that we're all individually unique and we all have an opportunity to use our lives to glorify God and then the one thing for the men watching as well men of God <laughs> I talked about modesty and I think sometimes because in the past it's been used in a way to kind of berate women in that you know it's our fault that men are doing this it's our fault that men are doing that and I understand yes you know we we need to also be careful xyz but like I said, it first starts from the position that I'm doing this to honor God first and foremost inwardly. But at the same time, if you're constantly focused on, oh, the men, the men, the men, I'm not saying it's not important that that is an element of us being mindful. But at the same time, a fruit of the spirit is self-control. Men of God, it's OK to exercise that fruit of the spirit as self-control, because if you leave, um, I guess, that kind of, OK, I'm going to, you know, deal with the lust by just you know blaming the women then you'll never see that there's actually growth in your christian walk like god can help you with that god can help you to be free from that god can develop your understanding and your heart so that you're no longer lusting in such way but if you keep shifting the blame to a woman you will never actually mature in your walk with god we will never see that fruit of the spirit that self-control it is such a key key thing and so i just say men of god you know take that to God and allow God to help you to work on your self-control because it will actually help you holistically in your Christian walk as well and you know going on to marriage and things like that and the final thing I forgot to say earlier when you talk about beauty and these things there's always that lingering thing about like marriage and stuff because 
it, it just is um and that's why I was saying earlier that women of God let's not carry ourselves like yam um because <laughs> because I was listening to this um panel discussion with this woman of God Priscilla Shara that I really admire and she was talking to men of God in her life including her husband and she was saying that oh you know for my single ladies out there you know they say they work on their inside they love God they fear God but still nobody's coming to them xyz and one of the men said something that really sticks with me today and he said that you know those things are great but as somebody that doesn't know you like I said, it's God that looks at the heart and the inside. People see the outside. As somebody that doesn't know you, I cannot see that you are caring. I cannot see that you are kind. I cannot see that you're a person of peace because I don't have that kind of spiritual eyes to see that. What I see is what is in front of me. And so they'll never actually be able to, you know, experience that beauty if the one that is, you know, holding that beauty is just carrying themselves anyway, anyhow. So, you know, I, I just encourage women of God, it is not a sin to look nice, okay? Let's just free ourselves. It's not a sin to carry yourself well. Yes, you know, vanity and all that type of stuff is there, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just carrying yourself as somebody who understands that she's beautiful on the inside and then letting that express itself on the outside. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, would you like to pray for us? Uh, yes, for please. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this discussion today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for how you led the conversation. God, we are grateful for such a platform to speak your word and to speak the truth. Almighty God, we pray for everybody that has listened and will come to listen in future. We pray, God, just like Peter on the day of Pentecost, Lord, may these words pierce their hearts, oh God. May it cause people to be willing to change their ways. We pray, God, for the women listening, oh God, that they will understand that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. May they see themselves how you see them. May they not allow social media nor the world to dictate what they do. But God, rather, may we be people that cause change and transformation in our society. Lord, we thank you so much much for Isaac we thank you for the things you're doing through him we pray God that you continue to use him as a vessel to bring up such difficult conversations to the light so people can experience wisdom people can hear knowledge oh God that will bless them and we thank you God that you indeed have created us fearfully and wonderfully made to you be all praise forever amen 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 God bless you Marie for for your time you know it was a powerful time uh, I hope that you will go and watch it again just so you know you know, I'll watch it and I'll just be laughing at myself like, oh, no, no. like you want, you want, you'll be, you'll be highly, highly, highly proud of yourself, you know, because oh, it was a very good discussion, a very good topic. And I believe that a lot of um, my youth are, are sharing on our platform, they will be able to watch it because we've got a lot of young women as well there that need your words. So, you know, probably one day we'll invite you as well uh, physically so you can come and uh, amen, amen. <laughs> Okay. So God bless you for joining us today. You know, uh, I'm very proud of you. So thank you very much. Thank you so you much for having me. I'm grateful. Thank you. So guys, um, we have done. You know, uh, it's today we, we spoke about beauty, and uh, and I believe that you were blessed. And um, so I think we will see each other in the next couple of weeks with another topic, which is about the Christian boy. And this time we have another guy, which every third Saturday of the month is on this platform as well. So um, a guy called Steve, I'm not gonna say all his name, is gonna come here and help us with this, the, the topic of the challenges of a Christian boy, which yeah. there are many, you know, many. And because of social media are more and more and more as well. Mm. The things that we see, the things that we have to deal with as a man, mm. you know, in this generation are quite hard. Uh, I always tell my wife that, um, you know, I'm blessed that I'm married to a beautiful woman. Yeah. If uh, other people go on social media every day, they're going to struggle a lot to finding a, let's say, a fearfully, a wonderfully made woman because social media has, has changed and redefined what a, a woman should be. And, and as well, as what a man should be because we have to make six figures, isn't it? Uh, we have to make money. If you don't make money, uh, you know, no one look at you. If you're broke. You're by yourself most of the time. So, you know, um, Steve, Steve will, uh, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> you know, Steve will uh, help us to talk about this topic because yeah. uh, I always think that if you, before you could go on a date with a woman and go to McDonald's, now 
I'm not gonna go to Vendon. I want to go to Marco Pierre. Oh, you know, I'm go to you know a beautiful restaurant. You know, so it, it's it's all about you know the society in which we live, we live now. I mean, there is a lot for us to take. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll come with the polls. We'll come with a lot of things. Um, I know that um, COP UK Radio TV has a lot of for you. Like tomorrow, we have morning view at six o'clock in the morning. You know, so we can start the day with Christ. And um, and yes, stay tuned. Then Marie, thank you very much. Stay blessed, and hopefully we'll have you here again.